What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here lady. This story's called, Oops, Karen Meets Off-Duty Cop. Hello everyone, just figured I would share something that happened to me some time back. I don't use Reddit much, so I apologize ahead of time. Let me set the stage. I was in one of the big home improvement chain stores. You know the one with the big blue logo of a house? There are a few people involved. Me, of course. Other customer? Manager. And of course, Karen. First, I was in a bit of a hurry as I had a pretty busy schedule that day and just wanted to get in and out as quickly as possible. Well, I walked around for what seemed like forever, pacing every aisle, and I could not find what I was looking for. By the way, just a common water filter from what I recall, I also did not come across any employees out on the floor, as the only ones I saw were checking people out. I walked down one aisle and saw a Hispanic man, race will be relevant later, grabbing some items off the shelf. He is clearly not an employee, as he is well-dressed in nice jeans and a polo. The only reason he first gave me pause was the radio on his belt, but clearly figured out it was not one from the store as they use some kind of smartphone looking radio. In desperation, I said, Hal, he might know where my item may be. He had the swagger of a man who has clearly been in the store a few times. So we begin. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I know you don't work here, but by any chance, you have any idea where the water filters are? They seem to have moved them again, and I cannot locate any employees. <laughs> I know, I think they only keep one employee at a time to work the entire store. I know, it gets very frustrating. Those corporate folks are always looking for a way to save a buck and kill customer service in the process. Sad, but so true. Yeah, I just picked up some water filters the other day. Here, let me show you where they moved to. Oh, thank you. You really don't have to, just point me in the direction, I'm sure I can get it from there. Small talk as I followed him to the location and he pointed down the aisle directly at them. At this point, we are both standing in front front of the store, facing down the aisle, when from the distance we hear, Hey you, Jose, Juan, Carlos. She muttered about half a dozen Spanish names out, other customer not realizing she is hollering at us, or just finishing up our bullcrapping. Karen, now standing right behind us, gets right up into other customer's ear, and not kidding, about two inches away. Didn't you hear me holler for you? I need some assistance. Do you speak English? I turn around, seeing the typical soccer mom Karen that was dressed like she was about to go out on a night on the town and was well out of place in a hardware store. I'm sorry ma'am, I don't work here but I can help you with something. Karen, I guess not hearing the I don't work here part, goes off on a rant. You freaking lazy A-word Mexicans, she said a few more racial slurs. I've been hollering for you for a while and you can help your own kind out but not if you're white. Confused as I am white and getting pretty angry at this point as I have already spent longer in here than I wanted to, and now I am dealing with this. Excuse me, but you need to calm the F word down, B word. In a forceful manner, other customer swipes his arm across my chest and to push me backward in the I got this fashion, still playing it all calm, cool, and collected. I'm sure if you can calm down for one minute, we can get this resolved. Can you please tell me about your problem? My problem is all you lazy A word Mexicans taking all the jobs and not wanting to work. Where is your damn manager? Not knowing when to shut up, I say under my breath, but still audible, B word. Karen lunges for me and slaps me right across my face hard as hell. A uh, other customer, like some kind of ninja, grabs Karen's arm, spun her around so fast all I saw was her face planted on the floor with a knee in her back. While holding one of Karen's arms, he grabs his radio and makes a call requesting an officer to our location. Manager comes running to see what all the fuss was about, screaming, Get off that lady right now! We have called the cops! By this time, he has already put away his radio and had the badge in his hand and flashed it to manager. I have already called for a car. He looks at me with one of those please say yes looks. Would you like to press charges? Of course I do! As I rub my face, and I am not kidding, I have not 
not been hit that hard in years, and I swear I saw stars. Other customers slowly got Karen back to her feet, and you can tell by this point, no, she has messed up bad as she just stood there and did not say a word. Can you tell me what happened? Other customer told the whole story. A few minutes later, the patrol car arrived, then other customer, manager, Karen, and the cop moved outside the store. I stayed back and decided to grab my filters while they got it all sorted out. As I walk out the store, I see Karen being loaded up in the back of the car in handcuffs. Let me tell you, that was very satisfying to see. Other customer had me sign some stuff when he noticed my last name, and we found out he is good friends with a lot of my family. That's a pretty cool story. Um, other customer's a badass. This story's called, I do work here, but I can't do that. So this isn't a normal I don't work here lady situation because I did actually work at the location in the story, but as the title says, I couldn't do what the lady in the story was asking of me because it wasn't my job. Let me know if this belongs in a different sub. I live in the capital city of a US state. Every summer, the city hosts the annual state fair, which features the usual state county fair stuff, i.e. rides, booths, fried foods, displays from all over the state, etc. Part of this included various live entertainment shows, which ranged from small local bands and acts playing on small stages in the food court, to bigger music stars taking an outdoor main stage. These included old classic rockers, 90s alternative bands, cover bands, Christian groups, and country acts. Seating included ticketed seats in the front 1500 seats, and first come, first serve seating in the back 1500. These people would need a wristband in order to come in to be allowed out access and had to remain in the area and whatever seat they had chosen. My best friend's mom, Linda, has worked the main stage at the fair for a couple of decades at this point. It's something she does every year simply because she likes it. I don't personally understand it, but she's a grown-up. She can do whatever she wants. A couple of years ago, she reached out to me asking if I was interested in helping her out for the two-week run of the fair. I wasn't all that interested, but needed the job and said yes. The job itself wasn't too bad. It it involved keeping the seating area clean and organized primarily, and helping out the security staff keep everyone safe and calm. I was very specifically told by Linda and her bosses that I was to not talk to the band or anyone connected with the band unless they spoke to me. So one night, a country singer, Johnny, was performing. Johnny was a big enough name in the country scene. I saw him listed in the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville not long after this, that he had attracted quite a large crowd. All the tickets had been sold, all the free seats had been claimed, and the area outside the seating was filled with people standing and watching. By all accounts, everyone had a good time. Johnny put on a good show, and despite a more rowdy crowd, nothing too major happened. At the end of the show, I was with Linda as we moved through the seats, clearing out the last remaining stragglers. One of these was a woman probably in her mid-40s, wearing a black vest over a green shirt. Key detail, denim shorts, not Daisy Dukes, black tights and boots and short hair. Despite that description, she wasn't a Karen, at least not with me. So I'll call her Penny. Penny was standing in the front ticketed section of the seating area and saw me walking toward her. Hey, can you take me backstage to meet Johnny? Do you have a pass? No. Then no. Please? No, I can't. I would lose my job over this. It's about this time. Time, another guy has drawn my attention. He asked the same thing. Hey, uh, can you take me backstage to meet Johnny? No. Oh. Penny, not taking other guy's hint. Well, can't you just talk to Johnny? No, I can't do that. I've literally been told I'm not allowed to. Well, can't you ask someone in the band? I can't do that. What about his manager? No, I can't do that. This continues for a little bit in this fashion as she follows me out of the venue toward the entrance to the backstage area. Eventually, the conversation goes like this. Listen, can you just talk to his manager and say, the woman in the green shirt who stared at you all night would like to meet him? It's at this point that everything fully clicks into place, and I realize what she's asking me to do. Naturally, I can't do that, and if I was given the opportunity to redo this conversation, I probably would have shut this down more forcefully. But I was tired and just wanted to go home at this point. <sighs> I'll see what I can do. 
thank you. No promises. So as I leave her, I head backstage telling myself there was no way in hell I was going to do that. I went back, got my stuff, and told Linda about Penny. Green shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I had to tell her to stop dancing in the aisles a few times. So I said my goodbyes to Linda, got my stuff, and headed out. As I leave backstage, who should I see waiting for me but Penny? She spots me and starts to follow me again. So what did he say? Lying through my teeth. Oh, he's gone. I didn't see him. What? Did he move on to his next city or something? I guess. Penny stops and turns back. I don't. The last I saw of her, she was standing in front of a security guard. I don't know what she said or what her face looked like, and I never heard what happened afterwards. So yeah, not exactly an I don't work here story, more of an I can't do that one. Good job maintaining composure. <laughs> I would have been annoyed at that point. I mean, maybe not, but reading it's a different thing than experiencing, experiencing it all together, but I'm sure Johnny appreciated you. Alright, this story's called, I am most definitely not an Uber driver. As the title says, I am not an Uber or Lyft driver. There is no indication anywhere on my vehicle that I would be. I don't really put stickers on my truck anyway, so it's not like there is any confusion on this. I drive a 2014 Silverado, and I take care of it and keep the inside looking nice. And from some of the horror stories I've heard, I don't want to let strangers in my truck. Nothing against Uber or Lyft drivers just not doing it in a vehicle I worked very hard to be able to buy. Anywho, yesterday I drove my wife to Ulta so she could shop for beauty products. I really had no interest in going in, so I parked and played on my phone for a bit. After about 15 minutes, the passenger door opens and some stranger gets in. This woman looked like she walked straight out of a meme about Karens and hopped into my truck. No wonder I was waiting so long. You're over here fruin screwing around. Uh. I think you're in the wrong vehicle. I don't know you. Why are you in my truck? I need to go to... Address. It's down by the amphitheater. I'm not a cab. You're the Uber driver I called for. You have the sticker. I look around. I totally have friends that would put something on my truck as a joke, but I wasn't seeing it. Ma'am, you must be seeing things. There is no sticker on my truck. I'm not an Uber driver. Random lady pulls out her phone with a tone of such superiority that I immediately wanted to just push her out of the door. Says, My app says that the driver will be in a blue Ford Focus, and that's you. I laughed out loud. What is so funny? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a free ride to the eye doctor to get you some glasses. You said your driver was in a blue Ford Focus? A small car. And you confused it with a dark gray Chevy Silverado. A pickup truck? In no possible trick of the light could those two ever get mixed up. You obviously need glasses, Mrs. Magoo. I'm sure everyone is about to be shocked by her next line. I've read enough Reddit stories, and even written one or two. I should have seen this coming. How dare you! I'm not your driver. I don't drive for Uber. There is no sticker. You got into the completely wrong vehicle. The only thing that I can see as a reason is that your eyesight is terrible, or you are starting to come down with Alzheimer's or dementia, which would be tragic, but I don't think this is the case. I was watching the care and rage build up in her face. I was expecting the explosion, but she switched tactics on me. I thought she was gonna zig, but she zagged. Well, I still need a ride and you aren't doing anything. So why don't you just take me there? I can give you five dollars. She said this like she was trying to bribe a little kid with a piece of candy. I might have been willing to give her a ride. I'm a nice guy to most people and am generally willing to help people out. However, her condescending tone got under my skin and I am not going to reward that kind of behavior. No, and you need to get out. My wife is here. She had just shown up. This lady had the audacity to roll down the window and tell my wife, you can wait, I need the ride. It was that moment too that I just happened to see a blue Ford Focus driving really slow in front of the stores and the driver looking around, obviously her ride. I started speaking slowly while keeping an eye on the driver. Ma'am, listen, I am not driving you anywhere. I'm taking my wife home and she definitely doesn't have to wait for you. You need to get out of my truck before I call the police. If you are waiting for your ride, you need to 
settle that with Uber. Uh, by the way, the Uber driver you were waiting for is leaving the parking lot right now. I pointed to the blue car that was moving to the lot's exit back onto the road. She flung my door open and tried to go chasing after him. It was pretty comical, really. My wife gets in and says, You have a strange taste in hookers. Another five minutes and I think I could have gotten a free handy. We drove past her on the way out. She didn't look happy. <laughs> That's a cool wife. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.